Okay, so uh, overall, Mexico was phenomenal and exhausting, but phenomenal. Um, probably the most incredible thing um, was I got to work on the floor, so I got to um, work next, next to the prayer line and see all the miracles happen. The most incredible one was um, there was this little girl um, that prophet came up to and started praying for. She had casts or um, stilts kind of on her on her legs and she couldn't walk. And so um, as he as he began to pray for her, they took off they took off the bandages around her legs. And the first moment she got on her feet, she started to cry because she wasn't aware of what was going on. And like in a couple of seconds, the little girl just took off with her mom. And watching like it's one thing watching an adult get healed and they're in their they know what's going on. They know what God's gonna do. They have the faith. But this little girl that did that didn't even know what was going on with her, but watching her walk for the first time was phenomenal. I was standing next to Leo and me and Leo just looked at each other and we were like, we just were speechless at how great God was. I too, I too, there was tons of memories, experiences to take home with us. Um, my biggest one, I would say, was working alongside with wise men Daniel. Where with that, we were on the floor, and to, to see where Holy Spirit leads him as well. He was just running down the rows and finding people, and he would have me translate for him and tell them, you, the moment the camera comes, you're going to get up and you're going to start walking. Whether it was from wheelchairs, crutches, and even people with oxygen masks that they had on, he would just go pick up, select whoever Holy Spirit leads them, leads him to, and tells them, hey, you're going to get up the moment the camera comes. So for me to translate that, at first, I was kind of like, Okay, do I just tell them that? I, I was expecting Prophet to come and touch them and to see them. But that the lesson was, my biggest lesson there was to see that Holy Spirit is with us. That wherever you're at, you can see healings, deliverance, and just have that faith. And the two simple things that he would tell them and prepare them is say, remember to pray in the name of Jesus and by the blood of God. So it was just um, just those two simple things to build up their faith. So he's like, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So to me, that touched me. And the other thing was where he would have people in all kinds of circumstances come up to him and say, hey, can you have prophet pray for me? Can you have prophet pray for me? And his answer was always like, prophet, myself, and you, we're all the same people and we can all pray. Our prayer is just as valuable as his, yours, and mine. So I think that was my biggest thing is a prayer in faith. I just want to uh, share a mighty presence of God I see in there. Um, so the uh, Bible says where two or more people gathering in the name of Jesus, the God's presence is there. So imagine where 80,000 people gathered in the name of Jesus. It was the uh, mighty power moves over there. So, um, yeah, w what I see, like, um, uh, how the people were manifesting and all around and so the any darkness that was there it was just couldn't stand uh, um, yeah because of the mighty power of our god and they just a lot of people um, were laying around and manifesting and uh, i looked on the other people that were on the side not in the middle of the stadium and it was the same thing over there and um and the um, second thing, the people that were on the wheelchairs. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, they had big happiness and I saw people, I was standing close by and uh, I saw people rising up from the wheelchairs and they were so happy. I kind of know this because my father is on wheelchair, so I know how it's happy, like, they could do anything by themselves and even go and grab the cup of water. So yeah, I was scaring even the wheelchair in the air behind the uh, woman she was walking ahead of me. So yeah, it was like great things. Praise God. So like with me, the greatest thing was to see when that mass prayer just started, not even like a second, as soon as I said mass prayer, you got to start, hundreds of people start manifesting. I was like, wow, I cannot, I cannot believe it. You like, you have to like bring the people out to the center of the aisles. I was like, as soon as you brought one people, person, there's like 10, 15 people more. I was like, I, cannot, I, was like, I don't know where to go. 
And then it was the second thing for me what touched me the most when I was bringing people to give the testimonies. They're like, when they got healed or delivered, their faces were light up. It's like totally different person that was sitting in the prayer line or before they got prayed for. They were like kind of like depressed or anything. They didn't want to do anything. And then as soon as they got prayed for, their faces like 360 churn. So that was like really amazing to see in people's lives. Okay, also I have a lot of things to share. I was in the group that came a week earlier. So I just got to see how much hard work gets behind the crusade, a big event like that. But there's a lot of things I can share, healings, testimonies, deliverances, prophecies. But one thing that really stood out for me is how much our team put in, how much work our team put in. Like a lot of the SCOAN team would even come up to our guys and ask them what to do, like the leadership behind our team and everything, what they did. Yeah, we were a thorn in each other's fleshes every morning. But when it came to the conference, the crusades, we were on top of our game. We knew what we were doing with what little information we had. So um, I was privileged to actually take pictures during the crusade. And I'll tell you what, there is no lens that can capture what happened there. It was phenomenal. I mean, what really touched me was um, during worship. Worship was so powerful. Even though it was in Spanish, I didn't understand anything. But the desperation that was in people's eyes was indescribable. I mean, people were just so hungry to touch God. And mass prayer happened, healings happened. It was, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom it all. But one thing I took back was that what happened there is going to happen here. Because the God that T.B. Joshua serves is the same God that we serve. And that, that's the one thing that really touched me. I came home and I was so satisfied. My heart was so full that knowing that everything that happened there, the healings, deliverances, the breakthroughs that were happening is the same thing that we're gonna see here. And that was just, that was a blessing to me. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing your testimonies this morning. And I also want to go back to the testimony that Salmia shared of the little girl. If Lilia, you can show the pictures of her. So she's right there in her little cast. Um, one of her, that foot right there was like this much shorter than the other. So she had to wear that cast. And she, she was missing a bone. And then he started praying for her, and they were making her walk. Then afterwards, they took it off, and she was still a little bit confused, not sure what was going on. Can, you can see how shorter her leg was. And then they told her to keep walking and to keep running, and then she just takes off running, and the whole crowd just goes crazy. It was simply incredible. But another thing, like, what I took back is people's desperation. We had the, um, our team had, like, the wristbands that we could go past the ushers when the ushers would let us. And so a lot of people in the crowd would hold on to us and, like, please, I need to see the prophet. Look at my baby. They would try and manipulate us, even lie to us, just to get to the prophet, just to get prayed over, just to get help, people's desperation. And it's not just in Mexico because people there come all over the world. It happens here, too, that people are in desperate need for the answer of God. They are in desperate need for a solution that is so much greater than them. And it gives purpose for us, and that's the vision of our church, that we want to see people saved, we want to see people delivered, and people healed for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. And without further ado, before I welcome our speaker for this morning, I want us to take this time and give our full attention to Martin as he's going to speak, means that if you need to put your phone on airplane mode so you can take notes without distractions, if no one could be walking around, we also have a nursery in the back over there that if your child is making noise that you please do take them to the nursery. It is very distracting and we want to protect the presence of God and this atmosphere so we can fully receive the word of God. Amen. So you guys, let's put our hands together for Martin. Martin. 